Hello everyone, Nubkex here, welcome back to Nub Raids, and in today's video, I want to talk about the champions that are going to be boosted in this weekend's 10 times summon rush event. This is obviously going to be part of the Walking Tomb Drang Fragment Collector event, so a lot of us are going to have to, gonna have to summon. I am going to be summoning shards, I skipped champion chase, so I'm going to need to pull at least 7 shards here. Uh, and unless you want a tournament, you're going to need to to definitely pull a few shards, probably around about 1750 points, about three sacred shards worth or 12 void shards worth. A lot of people are going to be pulling. So let's see if these champions that you might potentially get or have the best chance of getting are going to uh, be any good. So first of all, from the ancient and sacred shards, we do have Royal Guard and Zargala. These are both really good, so this is one of the great things about this. If you are opening up some sacreds for this Summon Rush event, you can be very happy with both these champions. Royal Guard is insane for speed farming level 20 dungeons, and he's extremely good for higher levels of Hydra as well. AoE, enemy max HP nuke, fantastic. So useful. Decreased defense A1. The four hitter at random with decreased speed. It's the decreased speed is really good for Hydra. Like you can get very consistent decreased speed on Head of Mischief with the AoE smack. Royal Guard is great. And this is a champion you're going to want multiple copies of. He is without any shadow of a doubt S tier, uh, S tier epic. No question. Zarkala, not as good as that, but still a great champion. Uh, still a great champion overall. So she's force affinity. She's AoE decreased defense on a four turn cooldown. Fun thing about her, she has a two turn cooldown single target hit. And when it kills anything, it actually does her AoE for free without affecting the AoE's cooldown, right? It's just she gets a free cast of crack armor, even if it's on cooldown, doesn't matter. Weaken on her A1 as well. So she's a really good champion overall. She does good damage. Uh, I would give her um, probably like, it's tough to say, isn't it? She's definitely not super essential. I'd probably give her probably like a B plus. Probably a B plus. Like you're not going to need her for too much stuff, but she's amazing for faction wars. She's amazing for any kind of faction specific content for this stuff. But she's not a champion you're going to use in any of your main teams. I do have a guide on her. So I think she's solid. She's she's worth building for sure. She's not terrible. But she's not like... You're not going to rush out to build her probably. Then we have the two void epics. They're going to be boosted. Genbo and Gala. Genbo and Gala. So let's look at Genbo first. Genbo is uh, the better one of the two. AoE Nuker. Looks badass as well. He hits hard. Nice thing about him, he gives himself crit rate, crit damage, and an extra turn. Then he goes in, he does a smack. It can decrease enemy buffs. Uh, can't be resisted on critical hits, so that is useful. He's also going to ignore unkillable when he's got increased attack on. That is very useful. He's got 20% speed aura for arena. He can steal increased attack, and you cannot uh, resist the steal. He's a great champ. He is a great champ. i got to give him... Uh, I'm going to give him probably an A+, plus, uh, maybe even S. I'm going to give him A+, plus overall. I'm going to give him A+. Plus. He's a really good arena nuker. That's the main thing you're going to use him for. He can come into your dungeons a little bit as well. But essentially, you're going to be bringing him in to buff himself up and then nuke an arena, hit through unkillable. He's very good for that. Actually, really solid. He's void affinity as well, so no weak hits. So great arena champion. Um... Yeah, he's just a great epic for that. Not so useful elsewhere in the game, though. Uh, he'll fill in a little bit, but that's about it. In the dwarves, then, we've got Gala Longbraids. She is the worst of these champions so far. Double hitter. She can ignore some shields and some defense on her A1. She ignores defense on her A2, gives herself a shield. Triple hitter that ignores some defense on her A3. Extra turn if she's full HP after using it. Attack in all battles. Look, she's a really hard-hitting single-target damage dealer that has an extra turn mechanic built in. She's great for faction wars, and she's decent, like, for the rest of the stuff. Honestly, though, I just wouldn't be super rushing out to build her. Um, Gala Longbraids, she's really a B-, minus. I'd actually give her a B-. minus. I think she's certainly the worst of these. She's fine. I have her built up. She's fine. She does good damage in the faction wars, and that's great. And she might be useful for, like, some Fire Knight stuff, maybe, early in the game. But uh, she's not a champion that you're really going to use very much, to be honest. Uh, like, Rugnor, in my opinion, is better. You've got a lot of better champions here. In fact, I'm going to be kind of harsh. I'll give her a C+. Plus. I'm going to give her a C+, plus, which is, I really, I'd try to avoid building her if I could. But if you build her, she's going to be fine for what she does. Not useless. Uh, then we have the legendaries. Leorius the Proud. 
It's gonna be the void one. Hefrak, Kandrophon, Mountain King. So this is where things get real good. So if we go to Leorius first. Let's get the voids out of the way. Leorius is incredible. He's extremely good. I think he's probably the best AoE nuker for Arena. Void affinity, so you got that going for you. He has an unkillable on himself, which is very helpful. And this passive massively ups his damage if he gets hit. So if you get outsped, if they go first, uh, he can survive an absolutely nuke the daylights out of them he's got a double hitter a2 that also makes him immune to all crowd control so this is just fantastic right when you start off the fight he's going to be triggering unkillable he's immune to all crowd control he can be taken down by champions like um warlord or yumiko uh or uh, uh romantu but it's tricky and he's got an aoe here as well that can place true fear and weaken which is just awesome so he's got two aoe's so he's amazing for wave clear through dungeons or or waves and doom tower he's gonna rip them apart he's amazing for arena his a1 smacks as well can decrease defense he's just absolutely top tier um top top tier he is the best champion we've talked about so far Arena, no question s plus uh yeah he is he's the best aoe nuker for arena what else is there to say well actually i guess hefrak's in there now so this is the thing that definitely mixes it up hefrak is kind of a monster kind of a monster if you guys haven't seen my Hefrak showcase you want to check it out he gives himself increased attack increased crit rate and an extra turn awesome uh, and then he has this aoe that ignores 15 percent defense and it does a double hit if he gets them below half health so if he gets them below half health he's basically gonna one shot them right because he gets to hit them again and unless they have reaction accessories or something he's just gonna rip them apart he has a double hitter if he crits on his a1 so this does huge damage as well and then he also gets to do his aoe for free whenever an ally is killed i think to unlock his full potential you need to run him with necret you need to run him with necret the great who can protect him and just ensure that he will not die and then he can come in and start nuking because he gives himself increased attack he doesn't need to be run with someone who gives you increased attack like you could run something like kaimar sifi necret hefrak pretty damn cool i think he's a monster he's really really good he also rips through dungeon waves like insanely well um one of the only downsides i guess is he doesn't have uh he has a three turn cooldown you know so he's not going to be able to to kill waves back to back without some help uh, but i think this guy's really good i think he's really good i'm going to give him an s for now uh more testing required he might be an s plus champion uh, I do think Leorius is slightly better overall, just more easily used utility, but I could be wrong. Hefrat could be could be the man. Kandrophon is also S as well. Really no surprise here. We had a guaranteed event in him recently. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting a second one. This is a champion you would empower, uh, and it's the faction guardians for this faction are nuts. Kandrophon's insane, though, because of his passive. He takes 40% less damage while under Veil or Perfect Veil. And also does 40% more damage while under Veil of Perfect Veil. He gets a Perfect Veil for free on himself that cannot be removed whenever an enemy's turn meter is filled on a three-turn cooldown. That's super, super useful for Arena. He, he, you know, if they go first, he protects himself. You get 15% damage reduction from Perfect Veil anyway, on top of the 40% here. So he's very survivable. He's a good affinity for defending an Arena. He's got a big smacking AoE that gives him an extra turn. And then one of the hardest hitting A1s in the game, this extra hit if the target's under any buff, it rips people apart. He also has attack in Arena 33%, which is nuts. So you can run him again. He's disgusting with a neck grab, all that sort of stuff. In arena defense he's the best arena defense uh legendary in the game i would say um yeah i'd say he's the best one overall rotos is good as well hefrak has got something to say for it but i think kandrophon is overall the most useful he's very scary mountain king then i'd probably give mountain king a b probably a b yeah maybe a b minus yeah actually you know what it's really got to be that b minus doesn't it it's it's hard to give him more than that Mountain King, um, he's a great arena champion as well, but not as good as these other ones. The great thing about him, he's got 31,000 base hit points, right? He's got 31,000 base HP. So this is a really tanky champion. And then he comes in and he's going to potentially one-shot people. He ignores 50% defense. This hits really hard. This move ignores shields and block damage. It hits decently well. This one hits decently well. He starts to stack up his attack whenever he kills enemies. He's really only useful only useful for arena and mostly tag arena as well it's unlikely he's going to be your best champ for your classic arena needs and, and he's really going to be used on defense only 
I think you really build him in a relentless set and hope that he starts one-shotting multiple champions and kills them off and can sort of snowball quickly so there's randomness to it. He's good. He's fine. Um, I think he's... I see him a lot in tag arena. Like, you do see him a lot. You see him even in some classic arena defenses uh, because he's so tanky. You build him real tanky and he can one-shot people. Um, but... I don't know. There's plenty of other options, but I think he's good for it. So he's not a bad champion to get. I don't have him. I'd like to get one. It would be pretty cool. I do use Morty Macab for this sort of role myself, who I think is better overall, but Mountain King's not bad. So there you go. Overall, overall, this Summon Rush event. Um, yeah, I think for your Void shards, uh, it's a bit of a toss-up. Obviously, if you're close to Mercy, it could be like as in... You know, you pull 10 Void Shards or 20 Void Shards max and you're going to get a Legendary. Yeah, Leorius is going to be really good to, to go for. It's probably worth the risk. He's so useful. Um, is it worth just pulling Void Shards for the sake of it just for Summon Rush points and hope you get these Epics? I, I No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's plenty of champs you can use in the Arena instead of Gambo. I don't think Gala is very good, so... I wouldn't risk it, really. I'd be saving my voids for 2x, where you're just going to get more void epics. There's so many that are good. I don't think you need either of these. Like, Gembo's great. You'd be happy if you get him, but you don't need him. Um, Ancients and Sacreds. Ancients not great in Summon Rush events. Sacreds are better. Uh, but look, I mean, these are good champs. Royal Guard, Zargala, they're both good. Again, you can do without Zargala, but she's useful. Royal Guard is great, and you can use multiple, so that's quite nice if you get him. Uh, and again... I think it's well worth going for these legendary. If you're very close to your mercy timer again, you're going to be fine. Or if you happen to pull one of these, you get lucky and you pull one, you're going to be really happy with these champs like Hefrak and Kandrafon are top tier. Mountain King, a bit more of a meme, but he is useful. You will use him potentially in Tag Arena uh, if you got the right team set up for him. So they're all good. So I think overall, it's a great, it's a good 10x actually. It's good overall. Definitely leaning for me more towards the pull a couple of sacreds to get your, your fragments and get out. Uh, but yeah, we got we got good champs in there. I'm sure people might be wailing out for Hefrak uh, in this one. Like Kandrafon, Hefrak, I'm sure people will wail out. And same with Leorius. We got really a bunch of top tier arena nukers in there that the whales might go for. For regular people, it's a decent one though with the, with the epics and all that. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you are pulling. Like I said, I will be pulling, I think, seven sacreds. Uh, so you can check that out. I'll probably post that video tomorrow or Saturday. Uh, depending on how busy I am. But yeah, thanks. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.